Hi, this is Dr. Thomas J. Ionello in Miller Place, Long Island, New York from North Isle Wellness Center. And today what I want to do is speak to you about women's hormones, how to evaluate them, how to balance them, and how to help women with their hormonally related problems. Before I get further into the actual work related to this topic, I want to tell you a personal story about something I experienced in my life many years ago that actually caused me to look at this subject and understand it so I could help more women in my community. About 17 years ago, my wife and I had uh, recently been married and we had wanted to have children. And unfortunately, my wife had many years of menstrual problems, menstrual irregularities, and problems with actually having a regular cycle. And uh, she was on birth control for about 12, 13 years since the age of about 16. And at that point, when we decided we were going to have children, I said, honey, you should probably go off the birth control pill so we could see when your natural cycle would come and when you would ovulate. So she goes off the birth control pill and what happens is she doesn't have her cycle. One month, two months, three months goes by and no cycle. So at this point, she doesn't know when she's ovulating and at that point, you cannot conceive a family if you don't have ovulation. So she goes back to her OBGYN to have an evaluation of what's going on with her hormones the OBGYN who had prescribed the medication for her over the years felt that it was something that was out of his expertise level so he referred her to a neuroendocrinologist with a focus on fertility. So um, on a Saturday morning all these years back I picked up my wife took her to the laboratory for analysis they took about eight vials of blood out of her and as a result she literally passed out from losing so much blood my wife is about four foot ten and at that time was about 88 pounds when we were newly married very tiny a former gymnast very strong but again a small body type uh, with not much body weight so after we revived her from taking all the blood they then proceeded to do um, ultrasound of her uterine area and her internal organs. They did CAT scans of the same areas. Uh, they took, um, uh, like I said, multiple levels of blood. And after all that testing, we waited for the results. So some months later, as we went back to get all the results, we had to wait a few months to actually get these results to get a, a follow-up appointment with this physician. I believe we spent about $3,000. I remember that because at the time I really was not making any money. I was an intern in college, uh, going to chiropractic college, and uh, we didn't make a living, so it, we had to put this on a credit card, which of course many of you know can be a problem, but it's what we had to do in order to take care of my wife. The thing that frustrated me most was that when we went back for the doctor's report, the, uh, the diagnosis was idiopathic infertility. In other words, idiopathic means we don't know why, but her body doesn't work normally. So this was not proper for me because uh, this did not give me any kind of answers. I was already into a major investment with no results. I was uh, very unhappy with the results the doctor gave. And, and ironically, she had gone in for her report of findings and what the doctor ended up saying to her was that he looked at her arms and based on the hair that was growing on her arms he felt that she had hormonal imbalance and literally his recommendations were you can't have children go home and, and proceed with adoption so my wife had bolted out of the office after she heard this and literally uh, it was inconsolable so now we get back home and she's pacing around our living room and she's crying furiously and she's just inconsolable and I, you know, I'm looking at her and I'm trying to understand why, why would this be happening? This is a woman that has all her parts and pieces. She's got nothing missing. She's got no disease process. We knew that from all the laboratory work. But for some reason, her body wouldn't function. So this was not a pathological problem where there was disease involved. This was more of a something's not working right. And by traditional medical evaluation, it wasn't showing up. So I, I'm looking at her as she's standing in front of me. And it starts to dawn on me to think of, of this problem from a structural point of view. Now again, understanding that my wife has a history of being a gymnast from when she was a little girl through college, she had put a lot of stress on her back as she would arch coming off the balance beam or finishing up her routine. She would hyperextend her back to, to give that good form and appearance as gymnasts do. 
So as I'm looking at her back, I see that the curvature in her spine is greater than it should be. It was not the normal curve, it was hyperextended. And with hyperextension of the spine, what happens is you put pressure on the nerves that are feeding from the spinal area up through the spinal cord and the uterine areas up to the brain. So as I'm looking at her, I'm thinking, okay, maybe what's going on is over the years she has had structural stress on her nerves as a result of years of hyperextension and now the communication cycle from the uterine organ through the spinal cord up to the brain has been impinged and there's something oppressing or, or compressing those nerves from sending the message up the spinal cord to the brain from the brain into the uh, pituitary and hypothalamic areas and then back down the spine so that the body knows that it should ovulate so I begin to explain this to her, and I explain that exact thought to her, and as I looked at her, I said, you know, Nadine, I think your problem is really more of a structural issue, not so much a, a hormonal issue. And I believe if we were to correct the underlying structure, the nervous system would then be able to communicate with the brain again, tell the brain to, to shoot the information back down the spinal cord to the, uh, to the uterine area to, to produce ovulation, and then your body would just correct itself. So I thought that was a very intelligent, you know, development of what might the problem be. So she looked at me and she goes, you're such an idiot. There's nothing that you can do about this. This is not a chiropractic problem. I have a real problem here and there's nothing you can do for me. So at that point, I realized that uh, talking to her about this for me would not be a good idea because sometimes when you're too close to a patient, they cannot hear what you're saying because there's an emotional connection. So at that point, I chose to refer her to a, a doctor of chiropractic who had trained me in school, who had 20 years of practice, a terrific doctor, and I brought Nadine in to see her. So we go in for the evaluation. The doctor does her physical evaluation on Nadine, does orthopedic neurological testing, does a spinal analysis, and her diagnosis is the same as mine. She agrees and concurs that my diagnosis is correct. And at that point, she recommends that Nadine begin a series of treatments at three times per week to actually change the stress on the nervous system by repositioning the spinal area to take the pressure off the nerves that are feeding the reproductive areas and hence not allowing her body to function normally. So she begins to do this and it was of no great ease for her. At the time Nadine was living in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. She was commuting into Manhattan every day for work and the doctor she had to see was in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn which was not just right down the block. This was literally a commute, probably about 20 miles by train and not convenient for Nadine. But because she was so motivated to help herself, she chose to make the commute to see the doctor for help. And then at that point began actually uh, getting treated. So as it turned out, um, by, by miracle, after about 10 weeks of care, three times a week, Nadine began cycling. And as we tried to have children, we actually did have our first child at that time. So, so what this caused was me to realize that there's something going on with infertility issues in women. So over the years, after many, many years of research and learning this information, what I realized is a couple of different things regarding women's hormones. Number one, a woman has to be evaluated structurally to see if there's any stress on the nerves that are feeding the reproductive organs and that can only be done through orthopedic neurological evaluation and chiropractic evaluation. Number two, a women's um, hormonal evaluation should be properly done and by properly done I mean by way of saliva testing. Why saliva testing? Because saliva testing shows you what's bioactively available for usage by the body as well as what's being utilized by the body and the saliva testing for a premenopausal woman should be over the course of the entire cyclical month, which is normally 28 days, taking so, um, select samples of saliva over the course of every few days. And then at that point, the output of saliva can be evaluated, as well as the ratio of progesterone to estrogen in the body. And when those areas are corrected, then the body can actually begin to heal itself. So after using these evaluation procedures, I've been able to help many women with infertility issues, hormonally related problems that they're not getting results from. And I have got great success without drugs. So again, I'd like to thank you for tuning in today. This is Dr. Tom Ionello from Miller Place, New York. And I'd like you to check us out at northislewellness.com and also on Facebook. 
Thanks very much. I'll talk to you soon.